Hello, I'm Jeffrey Smith. Welcome to our program, California Prevailing Wage for Contractors. The fact that you're watching this training video indicates that your company is sincerely interested in complying with the law and doing things right. And we are thrilled to be able to bring this information to you today to help guide you and your company towards success. Complying with California Prevailing Wage Law can be difficult, confusing, and sometimes even tricky. Even good contractors with every intention of doing things right can find themselves on the wrong side of the law or in an unproductive dispute with their field personnel. In this video, I am going to make clear for you a simple path that you can follow through the complex maze of regulations and requirements that you will encounter when awarded a public works contract in California. In this video, you will learn how to do the following. Establish which prevailing wage determinations apply to your work. Determine the proper craft or trade classification for the work performed by your workers. Recognize when you have to pay wage and or benefit increases and when you don't. Determine the proper wage and or benefit payments that must be made to workers. Determine any additional requirements related to shift work. Understand when holiday pay applies to the work. Determine if travel or subsistence payments are required for individual crafts given your specific job location. Pay training fund contributions and to which organizations to send those payments. How to fill out all of the sometimes confusing forms and when and to whom they should be delivered. And I will also give you some helpful tips and techniques along the way, as well as pitfalls to avoid. Before we start the how-to portion of this presentation, let's first take a moment to discuss the basic regulatory obligations that come with all public works projects in California. It's important that you understand these regulations so that you can keep your company out of trouble. Consider this a quick introduction to each subject. We won't go into detailed discussion of these regulations at this time. Instead, we will save the detailed discussion of these topics as they relate to prevailing wage law until later in the presentation. There are other regulations beyond the scope of this instructional program as well, which we will touch on only briefly near the end of the program. They are included even though they are beyond the scope of this program, as it is important that you are at least made aware of them. The first requirement that you must be aware of is the requirement for the payment of prevailing wage. The award of a public works contract requires that all workers employed on the project be paid not less than the specified general prevailing wage rates by the contractor and its subcontractors. The contractors are responsible for obtaining and complying with all applicable general prevailing wage rates for trades workers and any rate changes which may occur during the term of the contract. Prevailing wage rates and rate changes are to be posted at the job site for workers to view. Apprentices. It is the duty of the contractor and subcontractors to employ registered apprentices on public works projects pursuant to Labor Code Section 1777.5. Typically, apprentices must be employed at a ratio of one apprentice hour worked for every five journey hours worked. Certified payroll records. Pursuant to Labor Code Section 1776, contractors and subcontractors are required to keep accurate payroll records which reflect the name, address, social security number, and work classification of each employee. Contractors must also keep accurate payroll records regarding the straight time and overtime hours worked each day and each week, the fringe benefits, and the actual per diem wages paid to each journey person, apprentice, worker, or other employee hired in connection with a public works project. Contractors and subcontractors shall maintain their certified payrolls on a weekly basis and shall submit the certified payrolls at times designated in the contract or within 10 days upon request. In the event that there's been no work performed during a given week, the certified payroll records shall be annotated no work for that week. Penalties. Penalties, including forfeitures and debarment, shall be imposed for contractors and subcontractors for failure to pay prevailing wages, failure to maintain and submit accurate certified payroll records upon request, failure to employ apprentices, 
and for failure to pay employees for all hours worked at the correct prevailing wage rate. The penalties range up to $50 per day per worker. That's up to $15,000 per month for a crew of 10, plus the possibility of debarment from future public works contracts in the state of California and the possibility of being assessed other damages which can increase the cost of non-compliance dramatically. As we begin the how-to portion of this program, it is useful to have an understanding of how the Department of Industrial Relations is organized into divisions and what role each division plays. The three divisions that are pertinent to what we will be discussing here are the Division of Labor Standards Enforcement, often referred to as simply the DLSE, the Division of Labor Statistics and Research, or DLSR, and the Division of Apprenticeship Standards, or simply DAS. The mission of the Division of Labor Standards Enforcement is to vigorously enforce minimum labor standards in order to ensure employees are not required or permitted to work under substandard unlawful conditions and to protect employers who comply with the law from those who attempt to gain competitive advantage at the expense of their workers by failing to comply with minimum labor standards. One might say that the Division of Labor Standards Enforcement is the enforcement arm of the Department of Industrial Relations.